The 24 to 105 millimeter focal range packs a ton of utility into a single lens. Combine that with an F4 maximum aperture and you have a relatively compact package that can be very useful for the run and gun shooter. Now Canon's EF 24 to 105 millimeter F4 LIS USM, the lens we're looking at here, was originally released back in 2005 in the EF mount for the EOS DSLR platform. At this point, with support being recently discontinued, it's arguably obsolescent, if not obsolete. However, we're looking at this lens at least partly so we have a point of reference to compare the most modern RF mount version to in a future video. Now, if you're new to all of this, you might be wondering, what the heck is this guy talking about? What is breathing? My lens is glass and plastic, it can't breathe. Well, put simply, Breathing is the term that's used to describe a change in angle of view that accompanies focusing. This aberration is a problem for video shooters where the change in composition while focusing can become very distracting, especially if it happens between when pulling focus repeatedly between two actors in a scene. Fortunately, purpose-built video and cinema lenses don't actually do this, or at least they're not supposed to. Unfortunately for most of us using hybrid lenses on our mirrorless cameras, many of our lenses still suffer from this aberration. Now with that said, my testing process for all of this is pretty straightforward. I stick a pair of white targets, really it's just a bit of tape, on a black background. I then position my camera so that the two targets are near the edges of the frame, but not off of it. Then use my camera's focus bracketing function to produce a sequence of images that range from the minimum focus distance to infinity. Now for completeness, the test images are shot in small JPEG format, though really any size would work. And since there isn't any advantage to using RAW here, well, I don't. I do have distortion correction enabled, however, as I think it better reflects the way these lenses will be used and because there is an increasing number of lenses, especially on mirrorless platforms, that simply will not let you disable it. Now the real magic to all of this happens on the computer. I feed all of those JPEGs into some software that I wrote that measures the distance between the target's centers in each frame, and then ultimately compares them to the distance it measures in the last frame, which, if everything went correctly, was taken at infinity focus. Now since the infinity focus position tells us the lens's true angle of view, I can compare each frame to that infinity frame to determine how much the angle of view is changing, and then plot that against image distance, focus position, focus distance, or whatever I really want. Now on the whole, the EF 24 to 70 or 24 to 105 millimeter F4L is not the best performing lens out there. However, it's also not the worst either. Now starting our tests out at the 24 millimeter zoom position, the total breathing over the entire focus range is about 4%, with the angle of view getting wider as the camera focuses or the lens focuses closer to the camera. Now that said, given that some breathing can be acceptable, I also look at what I call the 2% threshold. This is where the angle of view has changed by 2% from the infinity focus position. At 24 millimeters on this lens, that happens at around 2.3 feet or 0.7 meters. Now stepping up the 28 millimeter position, the total angle of view shift increases to about 5.3%. Again, with the angle of view getting wider. Also, again, owing to the wide angle in view and the not horrific overall shift, the 2% threshold point happens at just over 39 inches or one meter from the camera. Zooming to the next position, or 35 millimeters, the total angle of view shift is now increased to approximately 6.5%, again, wider as the camera fo or lens focuses closer to the camera. And with both the focal length and the total amount of angle of view shift increasing, it's actually somewhat surprising to me that the 2% threshold is still at just over 39 inches or approximately one meter. Moving on to the 50 millimeter position and the lens is now breathing pretty significantly with a 9.5% wider total angle of view change. Now, additionally here, the 2% threshold has shifted to close to six feet or two meters away from the camera, which is starting to get into the range where it could be impactful. At 70 millimeters, the angle of view shift is now up to 12.7% wider. And that 2% threshold on account of the longer focal length and higher amount of breathing has stepped out to 12 feet or 3.5 meters. 
Finally, at our last test position of 105 millimeters, the total angle of view shift is now up to 17.9%, and the 2% threshold is out at over 33 feet, or 10 meters away from the camera. So that's the data. What can we conclude from it, if anything at all? Well, this is an old lens, and it predates any of the hybrid DSLRs by several years. Now, given that still photography has historically not been nearly as concerned with angle of view shifts or breathing as video users are, that's never been a high priority for the still lens designers. As such, it's really not surprising to see the breathing that we see on this lens. Now that said, other than those on an extreme budget and buying this lens used or primarily focused on stills, and still buying this lens used on an extreme budget, this really isn't the most relevant lens either. So with all that said, I hope you found this useful or at least interesting. If you, if this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to help support this channel, you can help us by liking and sharing this video. You can also support us directly by hitting that thanks button or buying yourself something you've always wanted from one of the affiliate links in the description below. And as always, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.